I was honestly trying to figure out something witty to say to start off this video, but I, <laughs> I'm speechless. I, I'm seriously speechless. The Nun 2 is the sequel to The Nun, which was released in 2018 and serves as the newest entry in The Conjuring Universe, releasing in theaters this weekend. It is directed by Michael Chaves and features Jonas Bloquette, Bonnie Ahrens, Taya Safarmiga, and Storm Reid. And The Nun 2 once again follows Sister Irene as she travels to a boarding school in France after a priest within the church is murdered. Now she has to come face to face with the malevolent force known as Valak one more time as she tries to put the demonic entity to rest once and for all. Now guys, before I get into my review of The Nun Tier, I want to see what you have to say down in the comment section below. Have you seen the movie yet? Are you excited for it? Please comment down below, let me know. I'm really interested to see what you will have to say regarding The Nun 2, because I don't think there is a single person that was demanding that this movie happened. I have never interacted with anyone that was demanding that, hey, we need a sequel to The Nun, or we need this character to come back. I was someone who loved Valak in The Conjuring 2. I'm one of those few people who isn't a massive fan of The Conjuring universe. I used to be, admittedly, but as I've gone on with time and as I've grown, I've really started to sort of notice the flaws with the first Conjuring movie, and I didn't like Annabelle. I don't like Annabelle Comes Home. The only two entries in the series I actually really love is The Conjuring 2 and Annabelle Creation. There is not a single person, however, that I have talked to that genuinely loved The Nun. I don't know a single person that loved this movie. I don't know anyone that even really enjoyed it as a matter of fact. When this movie came out, I was admittedly a little biased considering how Valak affected me when I saw The Conjuring 2 for the first time. It was, she was sort of my sleep paralysis demon. She sort of had that effect on me that sort of had me waking up in the middle of the night, unable to move, and then seeing things in the middle of the room as well. Sort of like when I was still half asleep, when I was, I was awake but half asleep at the same time, I'd have bad dreams regarding her. She was a terrifying, malevolent demon that was in a terrifying movie at the time. Granted, I don't think The Conjuring 2 is as scary of a movie nowadays, but I still appreciate the craft behind it and also the direction and the attempt at scares. I genuinely think it is still a great movie with great suspension and tension. Can't say the th same for The Nun, however. The thing is, that's the most frustrating thing about The Nun is that I gave it a positive review when I initially saw it in 2018, but within like a week or two of that movie coming out, I started to realize how fucking wrong I was and started to see it for what it really was. It's not that I think that the acting or anything was bad, I actually think Taya Safarmiga in particular was phenomenal in the film. She does an incredible job in The First Nun, and she even does an incredible job in this movie too, but... The foundation was there in The Nun for a great horror movie or just a fun horror experience. While it could have been familiar, it could have been something interesting and just enjoyable for us to see. But at the same time, what we were introduced and given was a boring, slocky, and very sleepy movie that kind of made me want to have a snooze, to take a nap in the middle of it, and there was nothing really memorable about it. I rewatched it recently leading up to The Nun 2, and it gave me the exact same effect. Within about 20 minutes of the movie, I was ready to fucking nod off. I pushed through, admittedly, because I was like, I haven't seen the movie since 2018. Maybe it's better than I remember. No, it's not. But the thing is, the foundation was definitely there for The Nun to be a great movie, or just a fun one at that. And The Nun 2 had a very easy task, in my opinion, of learning from the shortcomings and the mistakes of that first movie, taking the criticisms on board, and trying to be something bigger and better than what that first movie was, to take all the faults and take all the mistakes, and then make something bigger and better of itself. Sadly, it goes in the complete opposite fucking direction. The Nun 2 is an improvement in certain cases. For one, I think that the direction this time around is a little bit more solid in regards to just Michael Chaves as a visionary in general. Because Michael Chaves didn't write this movie, so I'm not going to fault him on that regard. In regards to his direction and how he tries to adapt this screenplay, I think he does a pretty good job. I'll also say that the cinematography this time around is a lot more pleasant than it was in the first movie. The first movie was very dark, very gloomy, not very interesting, and very grey. But this time around, visually, this movie is very pretty. And I'll say that. It still has that dark, gloomy, grey sort of texture and look to it, but at the same time, it's a little bit more pleasing and a little bit easier on the eyes for us as the viewer. And also, I'll say this, the shot composition is very nice. The DP this time around did a phenomenal job, and I actually think that this is a very pretty movie to look at, especially when it comes to production design, set design, locations, and all that sort of stuff within that department. The locations this time around isn't just gloomy castle, 
Sort of. Because the first movie was literally just one location in Graveyard. That's all the first movie was. And for that, it wasn't very pleasing to look at. It was only so much that you can do to keep such a location interesting with such a color grade to it and with such cinematography. This time around, it goes a little bit all over France. It starts off in a different country regarding the Thais Famiga character. And not only that, Frenchie's back or... What's his name again? Maurice. His name's Maurice, but we recall we, we, we recall his name being Frenchie. I'm gonna continue to call him Frenchie. But then she travels there to where Frenchie is, to the boarding school in France, and it's a little bit more interesting. There are more locations, more areas, more sets that they can go around this time around, making the actual visual experience of the movie a little bit more pleasing this time around throughout the runtime of the film. Unfortunately, however, after the halfway mark and Titus of Farmiga and Storm Reed do arrive at this boarding school, it is literally just boarding school, dark rooms, and courtyard. It goes from improving on the first movie in a certain regard to going back to what made that so visually boring in the first one all over again by the halfway mark of this fucking film. And even then, those scenes are sprinkled throughout the first half of the movie as well at the boarding school, so therefore, we get sprinkles of goodness with sprinkles of shit to then this blumped with shit in the second half of the movie regarding the locations all over again, but at least the set design, the locations are a little bit better built and also is used a lot more effectively this time around regarding locations and cinematography. I'll even praise the performances this time around because this script and this story does not deserve the talent on screen with Bonnie Annans, Jonas Paquette, Thaisa Farmiga, and Storm Reid. These are four incredible fucking actors that do the best with what they are given in this movie and give and give much better performances than this movie deserves. Not to mention as well, the young girl who plays Sophie in the movie, I think her name's Caitlin Rose Downey. She does an incredible job and I see a really bright future for this young actress who acts through some of the shittiest child writing I have ever seen, but somehow makes it convincing for the majority of the runtime. She does a brilliant job and I need to praise her performance because she, in my opinion at least, is not annoying as a lot of kin performances normally are. She is actually a very sympathetic and probably the only sympathetic character in this entire movie because she's a kid stuck in this shitty situation. You sort of naturally latch onto that, especially when the child performance and the character itself is not annoying. Sure, she acts as more a damsel in distress in the second half of the movie, but you can't help that, nor can the actress with the script that they are provided. But this story and this screenplay is so unequivocally boring and bland like the first one. Granted, it's slightly better paced than the first one, where slightly more things happen than the first movie, because the first movie I counted maybe four sequences of quote-unquote scares occurring. This time around, it feels the need to have something jump at you every 10 minutes, which is a big complaint of mine. You can be scary without being loud and obnoxious and feeling the need to jump at the camera. I don't think this movie understands how to be scary. There are moments where I'm like, you can have genuine tension in this moment with genuine suspense, genuine atmosphere. The location and the lighting complements this idea to be genuinely unnerving and nail biting. But unfortunately, the way that this movie is written doesn't complement that line of direction. So instead, the direction is forced to go in a different route where it's like, the fingers curl around the doorway and then the fingers disappear. But then sometimes the shadow isn't really a shadow and the face is a little bit more visible. We see the nun for a split second, then jump scare it, disappear, next scene. All right, forget that fucking happened. It is so mind blowing that this is the direction they went for with this horror movie. Considering that Valak in the original Conjuring 2, the original Conjuring 2, that doesn't make fucking sense. Valak in the Conjuring 2 was so terrifying because she was a malevolent force that was in the background with creepy, eerie, and just spine chilling music that complements her design and her stature. And Bonnie Ahrens embodied that role and she once again does her best in this shitty, fucking movie to try and be this character once again. Bonnie Aarons, this isn't her fucking fault by any means, nor was it her fault in the first movie for The Nun. But unfortunately, once again, her presence is overshadowed by CGI presence. She, there was one moment in the movie near the ending where they use this MacGuffin and the, the villain sort of gets a hold of it. I'm just gonna say it right now. 
It reminded me of the big CG Winnie the Pooh in Winnie the Pooh Blood and Honey. That is not a comparison you want anyone to make about your fucking movie. Like, it was so funny. I saw this with a buddy of mine, and we just started laughing. We thought that this was the funniest scene in the entire movie, and I couldn't take it seriously. A lot of the side characters provided a bunch of weird dialogue choices and acting choices where I'm surprised they didn't do retakes. They added in this weird, like, bully sub plot as well for the Sophie character like she's getting bullied and then these girls just make fun of her because Frenchie gives a shit like what yes we're gonna bully you because this guy who's technically the janitor or the keeper at this fucking boarding school has a good friendship with the child and the child's mother so we're gonna bully you because this guy and your mother have a romantic fucking relationship of sorts or they have that romantic tension yeah we're gonna bully you because of that it's a harmless relationship it's fucking fun why was this needed oh yeah just so we don't give a shit and can be like haha you deserved it when a kid gets injured later in the movie from a weird demonic goat There are so many things in this movie that are fucking wrong, and it was like the easiest thing to fix the first movie. It had the foundation for a great horror film with good moments just in a shitty movie where you could have improved upon that to make it a better experience overall, to be something fun and memorable and something to just pop in on the weekend on Blu-ray with your friends and stuff your face with popcorn and get scared and spooked. But no, this movie is still unequivocally boring. I couldn't sit still watching this movie. There is nothing worse than a boring horror movie in my opinion. And I've seen a lot of boring horror movies. But this one, just like the first Nun movie, almost put me to sleep on so many occasions. The best moment of the movie is when I left to go take a piss. I'm not even joking. I fucking hated this movie. I, I could go on forever about how bad The Nun 2 actually is. This The jump scares in this movie aren't even scary. They're the same predictable scares over and over again. Oh, you walk into a room, there's a top over that human shape thing. Yeah, now it's gonna move and scare you. That, there was one scare in the movie where like a statue fell over, but for a split fucking second, you saw a flash of Valak's face with the pointy teeth coming out of the mouth, but then it disappears and the statue hits the floor. Like, what the fuck was the point of that? It's a jump scare for the sake of a fucking jump scare because every 10 minutes in this shitty script, we need something to happen because otherwise the audience is gonna fucking leave, they're gonna nod off, they're not gonna fucking recommend it to anyone or they're gonna leave and get a fucking refund and we're not gonna get anything for our box office. Was anyone really asking for The Nun 2? I wanna genuinely ask, was anyone really asking for The Nun 2? This is disappointing as well because that first fucking trailer that we got, that only official trailer we got as a matter of fact, was so impressive. I'm like watching that trailer and it looked like this movie might actually be good. But the best scenes in the entire movie were edited into a trailer to trick viewers into going to see this movie and think it might actually be good. This movie's boring, this movie's uneventful, the movie's got predictable scares that are you recycled over and over again. The script is shit, the story's shit, it doesn't deserve the talent on screen. Everyone in this movie, Teresa Farmiga, Storm Reid, Jonas Paquette, Bonnie Ahrens, they really try. They try, and they are way better in this movie than this movie fucking deserves. Michael Chaves' direction, I can tell he's a talented fucking director, but he needs to stop making shit. I was so bored and let down by this movie that I was so relieved when the credits rolled. Oh, and there's a mid credit scene, of which if you're a fan of The Conjuring Universe, you'll get a kick out of. But it's pointless. I mean, it's like a 10 second scene. I hope those actors enjoyed their paycheck. Have fun. The Nun 2 is probably one of the worst movies I've seen so far in 2023, which is really fucking sad because I was really rooting for this movie. If you're gonna watch it, just wait till streaming. Don't see this, no one asked for it. Don't fucking watch it. I'm gonna give The Nun 2 a D. This really was fucking disappointing because I was remaining hopeful. I was really fucking hopeful that this movie would be at least something remotely interesting, good or eventful or fun. But it was the complete opposite. It took everything that the first movie did well and didn't improve at all and took only a minute amount of things that was wrong with the first movie and slightly improved on it.
very, very fucking slightly. Like you can have pretty cinematography, you can have pretty visuals, you can have pretty locations and good direction, but that's like putting sprinkles on a piece of shit. It's still a piece of shit. Anyway, thank you all so much for watching my review for The Nun 2. I hope you'll enjoy this movie more than I did if you go check it out. Look out for reviews for Blue Beetle and, you know, A Haunting in Venice coming next week because Australia gets these things way fucking later than the US apparently all the fucking time. So look out for those coming very, very soon. Thank you all so much for watching. Let me know down in the comments what you think of The Nun 2. As I said, look out for more movie reviews, movie reactions, and saw content coming very soon. As I said, make sure to click the subscribe button and I'll see you all in the next video. Take care.